Hi, it's uh, Paul Beckwith from the University of Ottawa, and I'm talking. I'll be talking about our broken, um, uh, our broken weather and climate system. Um, showing you uh, what's going on with the meteorology, like what's going on with the jet streams, temperatures, temperature anomalies around the globe, in North America, around the UK, and uh, how these huge uh, plus 20 degrees C temperature anomalies in the Arctic are uh, doing a number on sea ice formation. It's supposed to, sea ice is still supposed to be forming, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a look and see what's going on with that. So, uh, so first of all, um, so what we've got here is we've got the um, climate reanalyzer and um, I did a video, Extreme Weather Self-Forecasting, to explain how to use this uh, software, this package. It's no programming. You just go to the website, click on buttons, which I tell you what to do, which ones to click on. You can look at these things. So this is the anomaly. So, you know, is a pattern shift occurring? Um, this is a seven-day forecast from today out seven days. The purple area are up to minus 20 degrees C anomalies, the bright red areas are plus 20. So the Arctic is warm like crazy, even over Greenland. And you can see this purple kind of cycling south. Now it's not going as south and it's not as extensive as it was before. And it is followed by uh, positive, uh, by positive 20 anomalies. So this is uh, going to do a huge number on infrastructure, right? In the matter of uh, day, you know, we're going from minus 20 degrees below normal to plus 20 degrees C above normal. That's Celsius. For you, Ameri for uh, my American friends, uh, that doesn't mean anything. So it's Fahrenheit, which is, um, well, you can see the scale. It's uh, 36 degrees Fahrenheit anomaly. So, so 36 degrees Fahrenheit colder than normal to 36 degrees Fahrenheit plus normal in a day or two. You know, imagine how that expands and contracts steel on railways, for example, or pipelines. Just uh, think about it. Um, so that's the anomalies, and this is the jet streams. Um, and they're kind of synchronized, so you can see that where the jet is, right over here, is a trough. And, you know, it's cold in that region. Where the ridges are here, it's, it's uh, warmer. Um, Okay, so over here we have the global uh, picture. Um, so, well, first of all, over here I want to point out that uh, you know we're zipping. We're these things are zipping through the UK, you know. So this, this so we're getting all this um, passage over the ocean, all this moisture added to the air, and then it goes over the UK, which is colder because we're in the winter. Lands are lands colder than the ocean so that water vapor is condensing out into into rain there you go you see this jet twisting up covering the uk so uk uh uk is a write-off right now you know think of the positive side i mean the uh you know we're we're gonna have a country uh where uh you know everybody is uh concerned about climate change so maybe we can get action but don't hold your breath on that yet um, maybe I think I still think we need a food shortage to do that a global food shortage um, so over here um, is the global picture um, so before we were it was a top-down view this is a view looking at the global picture and you know maybe there's a pattern shift going on um, there seems to be less uh, cold air here you know instead of going further south and covering, you know, it's more eastward of the continent. Before it was covering the whole continent of North America, now it's covering the eastward part, and it's going out more over the ocean than, than directly down further. So, you know, um, we did get some uh, rains in California, some snow in Oregon, so maybe the jets aren't being carried right up into Alaska, they're coming further south. Um, you know, is this a pattern shift? If it is, it can bring, uh, you know, lots of rain to California. Is it in time to save crops, which may, may be um, at a 10 billion uh, economic cost right now? You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens shortly. Um, so going back over to, let me show you a couple other things here. 
Okay, this is precipitation here. And uh, this is the jet streams globally. Okay, uh, cycling through. So you can see the um, waviness and the fractured and the loops and so on. And so you can look at where your country is. I've, I've explained, uh, you know, how to use this climate reanalyzer. Um, and you can see, so you can see what's happening, why UK is getting hit, why there's extreme weather down here, flooding, you know, why Australia is still warm, New Zealand's in the shelter, is record cold, you know, we got currents moving up, cooling it. Um, and then these are the precipitation patterns here. So green is the rain, you know, look at the UK, big, big chunks covering the UK. Um, mixed precipitation, freezing rain events, and, or, and so on, are the, the purple, and then the snow is the blue. So where the transition is between the snow and the rain, um, you sh you'll have mixed, right? You'll have freezing rain events. I mean, we had that in Slovenia, uh, massive freezing rain events. Okay, so next we'll, we'll look at... Um, what's happening uh, with the, uh, if I can bring it up here. No, I had that already. So we'll close that down. We'll close this down. Okay, so how is this um, affecting the sea ice? You know, we're having these huge temperature anomalies over the Arctic and they've been there a long time. I mean, we had them definitely through January. We have them there through February so far. You know, they were even there in parts of uh, December. So what we have here is Arctic sea ice extent. So this is the area. Well, extent is, uh, you know, the area of ocean with at least 15% um, sea ice. So, you know, you can see that there's fluctuations on the curve. This is this year is a blue one. The, the dash line is 2011-2012, uh, which was the maximum melt year, the minimum sea ice. And then this is the average from 81 to 2010, the climatology we call it. And this is plus or minus two standard deviations off. So that's what, 92% um, or something um, of the data falls within, within that region. So what we're seeing here is there, there are dips and things. You know, maybe this this is probably just a fake out, but you know, wouldn't that be something if it was uh, if it reached the maximum already? Um, you know, if we do have a uh, pattern shift, um, that would be uh, quite incredible. I expect it will go like this. You know, it'll continue up uh, for a bit. But these anomalies are doing they're affecting the sea ice. So let me just show you a couple things here. A couple more things. Okay. Um, this is the ice thickness, okay, so this cycles through a uh, month of data, okay, it goes from basically, um, it, it projects out into the, into the future a few days, I think to the February 17th, so almost a week out. So it goes from January 17th to February 17th. Um, so the thick ice is the black, you know, and then red is, uh, you know, four, four and a half meters. And then we get down here, this is two meters. This stuff is really thin, you know, under a meter, the purple. Um, so what we're seeing here is this pattern. Um, so what it does is it cycles through the month and then it, reset. So when you see it jump, it's resetting to the beginning again, about January 17th or so. Um, so it doesn't look to me like this thing is uh, something that is uh, growing too much. You know, what I see is I see a lot of export of ice through the Fram Strait. So the thick ice here comes through. You know, maybe we should um, blow off uh, the uh, land here on Greenland you know, make it smoother so that the ice whips through, just finish it off. I mean, we might as well do that, right? You know, keep pumping up fossil fuel, burning fossil fuels, you know, keep loading up the atmosphere. Why don't we blow off here, you know, and ha make it easier for the ice to come out, you know, put it, put, put, it, put, put us out of our misery. 
um, you know, and wondering what's going to happen. Um, just a bit of dark humor there. So we're getting a lot of export here. We're also getting a lot of motion coming through here. You know, and look at the direction here. Sometimes the ice is, the currents are coming in. Sometimes they're going out. When they go out, they carry ice. When they come in, they're bringing warm water in underneath, making the ice uh, thinner here. You know, this blue is less than a meter in these areas. Um, the ice was, used to be thick up to these islands, but no more. This has been open all winter. You know, there's very little ice here in this, these regions. Um, because we've been seeing this motion back and forth. So this is not healthy. You know, have we reached a maximum? You know, we'll have, I'll let you know in a week or two. Um, so why is the ice doing this? Well, these are the, uh, this goes pretty quickly, but this is over the same month. This is uh, movement of the sea ice, the ice speed and drift in centimeters a second. So fast and slow, red is fast, and it cycles through quickly. But you can see some patterns here. You can see a lot of red coming down here, so we're getting a lot of export there. You can see a lot of red here, we're getting a lot of export there, and that's of the thicker ice here. You can see a lot of red at times pushing ice out into the Atlantic here. Um, here, here is interesting, it's shifting direction. Sometimes you can see very strong red coming, coming up this way, and that would be pulling in warm water. Um, from the Pacific through the Bering Strait. Other times you can see strong red coming this way and that's exporting the ice. So we're getting we're getting a mishmash here. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, this doesn't look like, uh, you know, strong sea ice growth to me. So, you know, is this a uh, maximum? Well, these sort of things you can only tell in the rear view mirror. So anyway, we'll, we'll keep you uh, attuned to uh, what's happening there. So uh, I'll end there. Um, and so until next time, thanks.